The following is a special presentation. There is absolutely no cause for alarm. We take you now to an office building in bustling downtown Decatur. <laughs> bustling? That's a laugh. Shh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Gibbon Stuffer. Thank you all for coming to this emergency meeting. Before we begin, though, I think we ought to address the elephant in the room. Get that elephant out of here, for God's sake! On it, sir! Thank you. Now, let's get down to business. People, WDZQ is in deep trouble. Also, our station's going down the crapper. But we're Decatur's most popular radio station. Maybe 20 years ago, but not anymore. People just aren't tuning in. But how? We play all the best music, we're always up to date on the news, and none of our DJs have ever been accused of unsavory acts. They commit them, sure, but they haven't been accused. Well, if you ask me, I No one's asking you, old man. Well, if you do ask me, I think it's all part of a mass conspiracy, masterminded by the French government. Oh, you blame the French for everything. You're damn right I do. The French are ruining this country with their loot fisk and stop like candy. Well, personally, I blame our call sign. How can we expect anyone to take our station seriously when our call letters are W-I-N-O? Wonderful Wino! Thank you for that. Look, the point is we've got to do something if we want to keep the station afloat, and we need to do it fast. Now think, people. How do we keep our station from going the way of the balanced breakfast? Well, Mr. Gibbon Stuffer, if I could put in my two cents for a second, I'd like to pose this question to you. Can you name one, just one, of our current disc jockeys? Ha! Easy! There's... Uh... Well, there's... That one guy who... Does the thing. Sir, I think he retired two years ago. Oh, damn. Well, uh... You know what? I got nothing. Exactly! Not a single one of us here knows the names of any of our on-air staff. Well, it helps us have plausible deniability. Don't you get it? If none of us here, the people who hired these DJs, who sign their paychecks every week, if none of us can remember any of their names, imagine how hard it must be for the casual listener. Just what are you getting at? What I am getting at, Mr. Gibbonstuffer, and it pains me to say this, is that we are a station without a personality. The only thing people think of when they hear W-I-N-O is... Wonderful Wino! You know, I'm beginning to hate that song. Well? What do you suggest we do? For starters, get rid of that jingle. Thank you! And then, in order to move forward with any sort of intention, we need to decide on what kind of identity we want to build for the station from here on out. You know, back in my day, we didn't have to worry about a station needing an identity. Back in your day, all that was on the radio was variety shows and the inner sanctum. And we liked it that way! Then came the French. Of course. Now, hang on a second. I think that old-timer's hit on something. He has? Yeah. Nostalgia's always in fashion. Everybody loves looking back on the past and pretending it's better than the way things are now. That's gonna be this station's new bag. Nostalgia. Golden oldies, corny DJs, and old-fashioned radio comedies. Well, it's not exactly what I had in mind, I'll admit, but it's better than nothing. Now we just need to find some people who can do old-fashioned radio comedy. Anybody here got any ideas? Well... There is this one station. They have folks who do sketch comedy shows every once in a while. Which station is that? It's that college station, WJMU. We could try asking if they'd loan us some folks or even if they'd full-on produce a whole show for us, but I don't know if they would. Oh, well, I'll be able to convince them. You just leave that to me. People, we are on the road to a new and improved WINO! Wonderful Wino! Would someone get those blasted jingle singers out of here? Feed them to the elephant, I don't care! And now we go to the office of WJMU General Manager Samuel Meister. Albatross. Albatross. Hello? Is this the General Manager of WJMU? Yes. I'm Al Lewis, just stuffer from WINO. Wonderful Wino! Shut up! Listen, I've got a little proposition for you. One I think will benefit both of our stations. I'm listening. I want sugarcoated, Meister. W-I-N-O is hemorrhaging listeners, and we need help desperately. Now, one of the members of our executive board has noticed that your station sometimes produces comedy specials. We do sometimes. We'd like to make a deal with you, Meister. 
You see, our station is reinventing itself, and we could do with a little bit of help from you and your crew. What do you need? Well, as part of our reinvention, we are looking to air some comedy shows, and we are wondering if you might be willing to produce a special for us while we try to figure out how to make our own. What would we get out of it? You could air the special on your station simultaneously. That's not really much in terms of us benefiting from this. Produce this special for us, Meister, and I'll let you have a night with my wife. What? Two nights with my wife. I'm a happily married man! Alright, two nights with my mistress. No. Two nights with my Lamborghini? No. Two nights with my elephant! What? what Fine! You drive a hard bargain, Meister. If you produce this comedy special for us, we will offer you some money. Money? Shoot, we could always use some more money. You've got a deal, sir. Later that day... Oh, that was pretty. Do it again. Later that day... Oh, Mama. Okay, guys. Do it again, you gorgeous hunk of man! Climb up, will ya? Anyway, another radio station has just offered us a considerable amount of money to produce a comedy special for them. We know. We heard. You did? When? About a minute ago. Oh. Well, anyone interested in working on it? I'd like to, but I've got so much on my plate already with Milliken Arts Cafe. Yeah, and I've got three shows in the podcast I'm already working on. And I can't think of an excuse and just don't want to do it. What about the deck? Oh, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do the thing. Me and my new pal, Kelson Bowman. Huh? Wait, where am I? How did I get here? Sam! Don't worry about it. It's this thing I can do sometimes. <laughs> How do you think I got most of my guest hosts in Big Blue Broadway? Sam! I'm sorry, but Alex is really busy this week and I need a co-host for the thing. But I've never hosted a radio special before. Please, it'd be fun. Besides, this cold open has been going on for way too long. Oh... All right. Yay! I'll go get the celebratory ham. He's a weird kid. Do you think he's going to share that ham? Good evening, listeners. WJMU proudly presents Once More for Fun. And now, here are your hosts, Sam LaRoe and Kelson Bowman. Thank you, Austin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our special this evening. We're certainly glad to be here tonight, aren't we, Kelson? I guess... Sorry, I'm just... I'm still processing everything. Look, just don't worry about it. You're here, and it's gonna be fun. Part of me doubts that so much. Well, nevertheless, I'm glad to be here, and I think we've got a marvelous show here tonight for our listeners. Well, that makes one of us. Look, maybe our first sketch will cheer you up and get you in a proper hosting mood. It's worth a shot, I guess. Great! Now, as of the time we're recording this special, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Right now, there aren't very many live performances going on. Our first sketch tonight makes us, as theater artists, feel slightly better about that. Hi, Kylie! Congrats on your stand-up debut! Thanks, Aunt Dorothy! Thanks so much for coming! I can't wait to see you on Saturday Night Live someday! Thanks, Aunt Dorothy! Hey, Kylie. I just loved your show. You know, I've been thinking of maybe going into stand-up myself. I'm a writer. I mostly write dramatic plays, but I've been studying other stand-ups, and, well, you have just really inspired me. It was wonderful. Thanks. Uh, quick reminder. Who are you exactly? You don't remember me? I can't say that I do. I'm sorry. Don't you remember when we were little at Uncle David's birthday party? We played Uno together with Cousin Lou and Cousin Rachel. I remember Lou and Rachel. Then surely you must remember me. I'm afraid not. I mean, I don't doubt that you were there. I just can't recall your name. Hey, Kylie, great job up there. Buzz off, Twiggy. We're catching up. Uh, oh, okay. Come on, Kylie, give it a guess. Come on. Uh, Crystal? No. Rebecca? No. Peyton? No. Mackenzie? No. Abigail? No. Rachel? No. I was the one with the bangs, remember? I kept talking about my new cat. Mr. Whiskers? You remember my cat's name after all these years, but you can't remember mine? Well, that's a cat. Cats are adorable. I'm adorable, too! Kylie, you were so amazing! I just... Take a hike, door. bozo. Jeez, lady. I'm gonna get you to remember my name if it kills you, Kylie Kirkwood. Look, I'm sorry. I forgot your name. It happens. I, I don't have a very good memory. You had a good enough memory to perform your set. 
Come on, tell me my name. Could you at least give me a hint? No. <sighs> Emily? No. Nicole? No. Megan? Jordan? Anais? Look, just tell me already. No! I want you to remember. Ugh. Mary? No. Hannah? No. Bella? No! Look, lady, the show ended 17 hours ago. Will you please let me go? Not until you get my name right. I'll keep you here 17 years if that's what it takes. I really have to pee. Damn your kidneys. Say my name. Ugh. Um, uh, uh, Josie. No. Erica. No. Genevieve. That's exactly right. Oh, finally. You remember me. Yeah, sure. Well, I absolutely loved your show. Thanks. So, I was wondering if maybe you could give me some pointers? Oh, buzz off. Wait, I... And now we pause for station identification. Which station is this again? It's that college station that sometimes has football games. Is there a game on now? No. Change the channel. Come on now. Play the real station ID. You're listening to WJMU 89.5, The Quad. And we're back. That was fast. Well, it had to be. The cold open took up so much time. Anyway, in November of 2019, WJMU aired Turn Your Dial to Murder, a comedic murder mystery. Since then, we've gotten a few requests to do another. Please make me do another comedic murder mystery. And so, it is with great pride and mild dyspepsia that WJMU proudly presents... And then there were slightly less. Or... I'm sorry, we haven't a clue. And then the bartender says, I know, but with a penguin? <laughs> <laughs> How very droll, Bartholomew. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll step out for a bit of air. I believe I'll also step out for a bit of air. I'm afraid none of you will be stepping out for air. As a matter of fact, nobody is to leave this room. I'm Detective Roscoe Squiddington. Squiddington? Shut up. I'm here because someone has been murdered in this house tonight. And each of you is a suspect. Murdered? Good heavens! How awful! Who was it that was murdered? A uh, Mr- Was it Miss Conniption? No, no, Gerald. I'm right here. Oh, thank God. Was it Mrs. Adverb? No, no, I'm still here too. Maybe I was the one who was murdered. I don't think so, Dorothy. Would you shut up? The victim was a Mr. Lionel Squish. He was found in the study by one of the maids. Stabbed, shot, strangled, suffocated, and bludgeoned. You made sure to give me credit, right? Yep. Great. See ya! Bye. Anyway, each of you here is a suspect, and I intend to figure out which one of you committed the murder. Well, it can't have been me. I don't exist. Who was that? Who was what, Detective? Someone just denied killing Mr. Squish. Nobody said anything, Detective. Though as long as we're on the subject of denials... No fair! I was going to deny killing him first. I had a speech planned and everything. <coughs> Esteemed guests, I... <laughs> Alright, nobody move. No one is to leave this room. I'm Detective Hastings. Hold on a second. There's already a detective here! Yes, but you're assigned to the Squish murder. I'm here to investigate the murder of one Mr. Gerald Splorp. Well, that's just inefficient. Gentlemen, please! All this petty arguing is not going to get these crimes solved. Why did I just say that in a Minnesotan accent? She's right, Hastings. What do you say we cooperate? Two heads are better than one, after all. Sorry, Mac. I don't do partnerships. Now, Mr. Glug. Yes? Where were you at the time of the murder? I was in here, not killing anyone. It's true! I'm a witness. <laughs> ah! Patricia, no! Don't worry, Bartholomew, it's only a flesh wound. Help me up, please. All right. Now, Miss Conniption, where were you at the time of the murder? You're kidding, right? Detectives, this is really getting ridiculous. I mean, you really would get further with this investigation if- I just changed my accent again. <laughs> Detective! All right, nobody move. I'm Detective Gordon. I'm here to solve the mur- <laughs> You know, I think we're gonna be here a while. I'll get that. Ah! 
All right, nobody leave the room. I'm Detective Munson, and I'm here to... I'll get that. This may be a good time to go to the bathroom or something. Who is it? Squid. What? Squid, sir. A squid? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever... That'll be 14 bucks. Ugh, my spleen! Bartholomew! <laughs> We've had a lot of fun here tonight, but in all seriousness, what you've just heard was an attempt to make a very important point that, no matter your race, color, creed, religion, or sexual orientation, we're all susceptible to squid attacks. It's very important to know how to defend yourself when confronted by a squid and oh my god I did it again. It's also important to know the difference between a squid and Richard Nixon. The two may look similar, but the difference can be a matter of life or death. And always remember to lock your doors and windows at night so squids can't get in. And never enter the door after 9 o'clock. That's prime squid attack time. Be smart, or you might end up with me on your face. You silly old squid, get out of here! <laughs> All right. This has been a public service announcement. And many more. Catherine Yates, what an unexpected surprise. Priscilla Connery, always a pleasure. How are you? Fine, fine. Never expected to see you in the underground theater scene. Well, I'm always looking for high quality work, wherever it may be. Do tell, how did you like the show? Well, I enjoyed the youthful charm of the actors. These are clearly very passionate performers. However, I felt that the play's message seemed to almost dissipate throughout the story arc. Nonetheless, the cast did give it their all. I was particularly invested in the enthralling journey of our protagonist, Billy, until the actor began to lose steam. Oh yes, I had high hopes for Billy, but his performance simply did not pan out. His sudden tearful outburst in the middle of the final number of the first act was particularly disruptive of the play's otherwise breezy tone. I did feel that the Bumblebee Ensemble were a saving grace. Ah oh, yes, the Bumblebees! Perhaps the most memorable members of an otherwise unremarkable cast. However, even the bees couldn't fully meet my expectations. I was looking forward to their appearance, as I hoped they would address the sharp decline in the global bee population. Alas, their dialogue was limited to, Buzz! Buzz! Follow us, Billy! I must agree. Not some of this playwright's best work. She had a perfect opportunity to address a significant issue and give it the attention it so desperately needs, but alas, she squandered it. And unfortunately, the young cast, passionate as they were, simply could not rise above the material. I came in fully expecting a chill-inducing performance from the group, but the overall product was lackluster. Ultimately, the show left me thoroughly disappointed. Me as well. It's a two out of ten for me. Oh, I wouldn't be so generous. A one and a half at most. Oh, that must be the director. Hello, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for coming to see our production of Silly Billy and the Five Bumblebees. Your children all worked so hard on it, and they're all very proud of their work. I know I sure am. Now let's hear it for our little stars. Mommy! Helen, darling. Hi, Mommy. Hello, my little Elsa. How'd I do, Mommy? Was I good? Did you see me up there, Mommy? It was so fun. How'd I do? How'd I do? You were wonderful, darling. Absolutely wonderful. You were too, dear. Yay! I do believe such brilliant performances are worth a trip to Sweet Sadie's Ice Cream Shop. What do you say? Yay! All right, let's go. We're going to take a quick break here for station identification, followed by a quick message from one of our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU 89.5 The Quad. Oh no! I can't find my car! Oh no, wait. There it is. 
Oh no! Someone's backed into it and run off! And I don't have car insurance! What the hell? It's Eagle Man! Who? Don't worry, Chicagoans will get it. I feel like I'm about to get it. Shh! Eagle Man speaks! I've got something for you! Ah! Ugh! God! It's not Eagle Man! It's just a flasher disguised as Eagle Man! Get out of here, you pervert! Don't worry, we'll take care of this! <gasps> Millican Public, Public Safety! That's right! There! What? A ticket? Yeah, that car's not registered to park in this lot! That's a $150 fine! What about that freak in the Eagle suit with his pecker out? Well, he's not parked illegally. Now move that car before it's impounded! I hate it here. This message is brought to you by the National Council for the Promotion and Advancement of Kick Scooters. Remember, no one can give a scooter a ticket. Oh yeah? Well, we'll see about- <coughs> Get back! Get hey! back, copper! Step away from the scooter! And we're back! And I have absolutely no idea what just happened. Yeah, that happens a lot in these specials. Hopefully, our next sketch makes a bit more sense. All right, sir, we'll get that delivered to you in about 15 minutes. Have a good day. Excuse me, miss? Hello, welcome to the F&P Market customer service desk. How can I help you? Uh, one of your store employees just punched me in the face. Oh, that's terrible. I am so sorry, miss. Believe me, that kind of behavior is not what F&P Market stands for. Tell you what, to show you how sorry we are, here's some coupons for your next purchase of toilet paper. 50% off. They're good until August 31st. You really don't have to we'll do that. We'll also give you this box of Polish Jaffa Cakes free of charge. They're very good, miss. Look, I don't- And to show just how committed we here at FNP Market are to racial unity and understanding, I will personally go around the store, putting stickers over the faces on every box and bottle of every Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, and Mrs. Butterworth product. Miss- And furthermore, we will no longer pipe out any more Pat Boone music. From now on, we'll only play the original recordings by the original black artists. Okay, that actually sounds cool. I mean, Pat Boone sucks major donkey walks. Uh, look, miss, I really don't think it's necessary to do all Excuse that. Excuse me, I bought this box of tissues yesterday and it's defective. I'm sorry, miss, you'll have to wait a little bit. I'm still helping this young lady here. I hardly think her problem is any bit as pressing as mine. One of the employees here punched me in the face. Oh, well. Maybe if you hadn't been behaving suspiciously, he wouldn't have felt the need to hit you. I was just minding my own business and he punched me in the face. I've been shopping at the supermarket for the past 15 years and that's never happened to me. Clearly you must have done something to provoke him. I was just looking for some lucky charm. There is no need to get aggressive with me. I'm sorry, I just- I have mace! Ugh. Look, you really don't have to do any of that stuff on my account. I'm not sure what else we could do to show you just how sorry we are for what happened to you. Well, it'd be nice to see the guy who punched me face consequences for his actions. Are you suggesting we fire him? Well, yeah, I am. For the sake of your own customers, maybe you should fire him. We can't do that. It could ruin his life, send him on a downward spiral. Especially in this economy. You know how hard it is to find work these days. He punched me. In the face. Full on assault. Well, if you'd just done what he said He and... didn't say anything. He snuck up on me. I didn't even know he was there until he grabbed my shoulder, turned me around, and punched me in the face. Okay, miss, you're being disruptive and I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Of course. Again, we're very sorry for what happened to you. Yeah, sure. All right, let's move it along, lady. Ugh. Can you believe how ungrateful those people can be sometimes? Okay, Dory. Truth or dare? Dare. No, truth, truth! Oh, you said dare first. Come on, Steph, don't be like that. All right, all right, we'll do truth. Phew. Is it true that you have a crush on Spencer Coleman? Ah! Dare, 
dare! Ooh, I think that's a yes. No, I just... I would like a dare. I dare you to answer the question. Fine, I do. I have a crush on Spencer Coleman. Happy? Yep. Pay up, Mandy. I told you she had a crush on him. Damn it! Okay, Bailey, your turn. Truth or dare? Truth. Okay, so this is a hypothetical. All five of us are on an airplane together. The plane crashes into a mountain and the five of us are the only ones to make it out of the wreckage alive. We very quickly run out of food. In order to survive, you will have to eat one of us. Which one of us would you eat first? What? If the five of us got into a Donner Party type situation, which one of us would you eat first? No, I know what you meant, just... Why? Hey, you asked for truth. I wasn't expecting a question about cannibalism! Well, that's your question. Now, which one of us would you eat first? I don't know, uh... Tori, I guess. Alright, whose turn is it now? Wait, why Tori? Yeah, Bales, why me? I don't know! I just blurted it out! I picked you at random! So who would you really eat first? Come on, guys. Let's not do this. You can't just blurt stuff out, Bailey. It's truth or dare. If you pick truth, you have to tell the truth. Okay, fine! I picked Tori because I figured she'd be the first of us to die. You know how accident-prone you are, Tori. Hey! Well, you're right, though. I am a klutz. So you'd just wait for one of us to die on our own? You'd just starve until one of us, any of us, bites it? You wouldn't show any initiative? Mandy, can we not? Why well, settle on Tori? She's just skin and bones. If you really wanted to survive, you'd have picked someone with a bit more meat on their bones. Like who? Like me! I mean, look at these thighs. You could feed a family of five on these. Eh. But out, Lizzie. It was my question. Look, can we just move on? I answered the question. It's Steph's turn now. Why don't you want to eat me? What? Why don't you want to eat me, Bailey? I don't want to eat any of you! It's because I'm Jewish, isn't it? No! I'll lay off her, Mandy. She has perfectly valid reasons for picking Tori. Thank you! Now Even let's... if they are stupid. Oh, no. I mean, come on, Bailey. I'm the most athletic one here. Feel that muscle. That's good lean meat there. Wouldn't your athleticism just make you harder to catch? The best part of the hunt is the thrill of the chase. Now we're hunting each other? Oh my god! I wish you'd all stop fighting and just let her eat me. I'm not eating anyone here! You know what? I'm done with this game. I'm done. Let's play something else. Uh, Monopoly! A nice cannibal-free game of Monopoly! Fine. Spoil, spoil. Whatever. Can I be the doggo? I never get to be the doggo at home. If it makes you feel any better, Mandy, I'd eat you first. Thank you! Finally, someone in this group starts talking sense! And now, for something everybody's been waiting for. Sam's finally gonna let us have some of that celebratory ham? No! The celebratory ham is not for eating! It's just to look at! Actually, it's something that the audience can enjoy along with us here in the studio. By popular demand, Big Blue Broadway Sam LaRoe does a sketch with his girlfriends. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Randy Butternubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be mature. With me is my colleague, Miss Denny Greenwood. How do you do? We're representatives from the Flubblemint Chewing Gum Company. And what exactly is it you've got us all here for? I'm sure you're all familiar with Flubblemint's slogan, Four out of five dentists recommend flavorful Flubblemint gum. We want to find the one in five who doesn't. We just want to find out why. We don't want to harass any of you into changing your mind. Like hell we don't! What the hell's wrong with you ungrateful bastards? Denny, calm down. We don't even know which one of them it is yet. I think you're taking your slogan a bit too literally. I mean, five is a very small sample size. It's just as likely that all of us here would recommend your chewing gum, or that only three of us would. Maybe none of us would. You think we haven't thought of that? What do you think we are, stupid? Denny! We're interviewing five dentists at a time because it's an easy group size to handle. It allows us to talk with each of you individually. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get down to business. Which one of you is it that hates our gum? Is it you? No! Would you recommend our gum to your patients? I, I don't know. I guess? You guess? How about I guess my foot up your ass? Daddy, for the love of God, that doesn't even make sense. I'm so sorry for my friend, Dr. Jensen. She has no sense of proportion. They're costing us millions of dollars in profit! Stop it! Now... Which one of you is Dr. Murphy? I'm Dr. Murphy. All right. Now, Dr. Murphy, 
Would you recommend Flubblemint gum to your patients? If it's a sugarless gum, I suppose I would. Thank you. Dr. Gonzaga? Yes? Would you recommend Flubblemint gum to your patients? I think so. Thank you. Dr. Norris? I wouldn't recommend it by name, but I would recommend sugarless gum to my patients. You wouldn't recommend us by name, huh? You won't recommend us by name? I ought to recommend you by name to the Grim Reaper! Let go of him, Denny, please! Would you recommend us to your patients now? Yes, whatever, just don't hurt me. I'm so sorry, Dr. Norris. Keep that crazy woman away from me. Don't worry, I will. Now, Dr. Shapiro... Look, this is ridiculous. I mean, it's a meaningless statistic. No one really cares what dentists think about chewing gum. Oh, really? None of my patients do, anyway. So you've talked to your patients about chewing gum? Yes, I have. As a dentist, I feel it's my duty. Have you ever talked to them about Flubblemint gum? Occasionally, your brand gets mentioned. What do you say about Flubblemint gum? The standard dentist things? What are the standard dentist things? Do you recommend us to your patients? Do you? Or have you been telling them not to enjoy flavorful Flubblemint gum? Is that what you've been doing? What have you been saying about us, Shapiro? Tell us! Tell us! You want to know what I say about your gum? Fine. I tell them that I lost my brother thanks to your lousy chewing gum. He choked to death after reading one of the jokes on the back of the package while chewing three sticks of it. He was only 35. I will never forgive you for what you've taken from me. I'm sorry, but this ending is really stupid. Yeah, this has got to be the dumbest sketch I've ever been in. Yeah, and I only got two lines in the whole thing. Well, and now one final break for station identification, followed by a word from one of our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU 89.5, The Quad. Hi there, Looney Larry here, and I'm having my biggest clearance sale ever with prices so low, I'm practically giving this stuff away. Everything must go, and I mean everything. The IRS caught on to a lot of my fraudulent practices, and now I'm going off to the Hooscow. All because, in order to keep my prices so mind-bogglingly low, I had to fudge the numbers, cook the books, and cheat a crap load of powerful investors. But who gives a damn about investors? I only care about you, the customer. That's why you're never gonna find bargains like these anywhere else. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Haven't got any money at all? Hell, that's not a problem either. Looney Larry loves to barter. We will take literally anything as a form of currency. Cans of beans, old seashells, your sperm, even a bucket of pig's blood. Where'd you get it? Why do you have it? Who cares? We'll take it. We'll take anything. Everything must go. Hell, I'm not going to need any of this stuff where I'm going. So come on down and take advantage of this literally once in a lifetime clearance sale here at Looney Larry. These bargains are insane. Looney Larry Appliances, 345 North Water Street. And we're back! This semester, in the midst of all the... Well, everything, WJMU has been celebrating its 50th anniversary. Earlier in the semester, we produced a series of short sketches detailing fictionalized accounts of our station's rich, colorful history. Very fictionalized accounts. Tonight, we're going to close out our special by doing more of that. But instead of it being a bunch of short things, it's going to be one big thing. Made up of a bunch of short things all mushed up together. And so, we present to you, the history of WJMU. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. Just awful. I think the robot band is getting worse. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Hear me now, people! This evening, I come to you with a tale of much import. It is a tale of mirth and woe, of tragedy and betrayal, but ultimately, of dedication and triumph! Meaning this is going to be very long. This is the history of WJMU! The year was 1969. The place... Milliken University, a young upstart of an institution eagerly about to enter a new decade. 
While studying one evening for an important chapter quiz, an ambitious young communication major had a revolutionary idea. Hey guys, I just had a revolutionary idea. Claire, do you mind? We're playing Monopoly here. Yeah, Claire. We're playing Monopoly and totally not smoking reefer. Please, I only have one good idea a month, and if I don't share it with somebody, it'll be lost forever. But Monopoly is very important to us. Come on, guys. Just hear me out on this. Please? Alright, what is it? So, you know how I'm studying communication so I can work in radio after I graduate, right? You do mention that every once in a blue moon. Well... I was kind of thinking, maybe it would be cool if we had sort of a radio station on campus? What are you talking about, Claire? I mean, like, if we had our own radio station here at Milliken, and it was run by students, and you could take classes to learn how to work in radio, and we'd have the station so people could get hands-on experience. And we'd be able to fill a need for the rest of the town by doing original programming and playing all the music that the regular stations don't play. What do you think? Claire, that is the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Get out of here with your dumb girl ideas. Yeah, get on out of here with your girl hair and your girl clothes and your girl boobies. Fine. You guys suck at Monopoly anyway. You know, she's kind of right. We do suck at this game. Want to smoke some reefer? Yeah, sure. Alas, Claire's bold new idea had been rejected by the studentry. However, the very next day... Hey, you know what might be cool? If our college had a radio station. Aw, oh, dude, that would be so cool. Hey, that's my idea! Get out of here, Claire! Yeah, you're not in this story anymore! Bullcrap! It was my idea to start a radio station. I want to be in the story. Claire, and just go! Claire, leave! Every God. time Paul and I have girl hair, what are you doing? Soon, after weeks of petitioning, half a year of cutting through red tape, months of fundraising, and a year of construction, WJMU came into existence, making its very first broadcast on the eve of March 10th, 1971. Hello, Decatur! Hello, Milliken! Hello, world! WJMU is now on the air! Now what? Now came the need to develop original programming! As always, Milliken students answered the call. And now... WJMU presents its adaptation of Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Hey, Frankie. Uh. Isn't that an old Eddie Lawrence bit? Shh! Of course, not all of the years were kind to WJMU. In 1995, WJMU was rocked by scandal. You wanted to see me, Professor Gregory? Yes, Robin. Sit down. Okay. Hello, Robin. Vivian. Fancy your being here. Robin, Vivian has just relayed to me some very disturbing information. According to her, there is audio evidence that you've achieved much of your academic success this year through deceitful practices. What are you talking about? Oh, Robin, Robin, Robin. Don't play dumb. I've practically got your signed confession right here on this tape. I'm a big, dumb, stupid baby, and there's no way I can pass this big, important test tomorrow. I know. I'll cheat. And no one will suspect a thing. <laughs> that was very clearly not me. Nevertheless, it's your word against hers, and her father happens to have a lot of money. Loaded. So I'm afraid we're going to have to relieve you of your position as program director. I see. Well, it's been an honor serving this station. Thank you, Professor Gregory, and goodbye. And I hope whoever takes over my position will treat it with the same dignity and respect that I did. The very next day at the executive board meeting. All right, guys, I know you've all been wondering who's going to be taking over the position of program director now that Robin has had to resign in disgrace, transfer to a new college, and then die in a tragic automobile accident that may or may not have actually been an accident. Wait, what? Well, wonder no more. 
presenting our new program director, Vivian Harmon. What? Vivian! The controversial new host who's been spreading all those rumors about highly respected students and teachers on campus? That's right, bitches. Uh, you may want to cut down on the foul language during exec board meetings, Vivian. Oops, sorry. Now, you guys all get to know each other better while I go... not smoke some reefer. Okay, you donkheads. I'm in charge now, and I rule with an iron fist. Now everybody line up and give me your pudding cups. I know it was you who got Robin ousted, Vivian. There's no way I'm taking orders from you. Me either. Yeah! yeah. Shut up! You're all gonna do exactly as I say, or I'm gonna make you sleep in the mini-fridge. It's my way or the highway, baby. I'm Don Juan Cherry Tempo. Now get out of here and go make me some good programming. Rumble, 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 Under the reign of this tyrannical new program director, the station's output began to suffer. This script is boring. Make it funnier. But it's a news bulletin. Then make it sexier. Do I have to do all the thinking around here? Uh, Vivian, on this PSA script, the only note you gave me was, make it 30% funnier. What exactly does that mean? You're the writer. You figure it out. This is not how giving feedback works. Well, tough Rocco's! If you were any good, you wouldn't need feedback. So don't complain when I give it to you. Soon, the station was rocked by rumblings of mutiny. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Mutiny, mutiny, mutiny. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Mutiny, mutiny, mutiny. And it all came to a head one gray November afternoon. Let's see. What evil thing can I do today? Hmm. Hello, Vivian. Evelyn! Zack! All the other members of the exec board who don't get the dignity of names. What are you doing here? This is a mutiny. Okay, and that means? It means we don't think you're fit to be program director anymore, so we're kicking you out. All right, and what evidence do you have against me? You can't oust me without evidence. Oh, I think we have sufficient evidence. <gasps> Robin, I, I thought you were dead. I got better. And I just so happened to have proof that you faked the recording you used to get me kicked off the exec board. I'm gonna make a fake tape of Robin and frame her for cheating so that she gets kicked out of school because I'm a big dumb baby and I don't have an ass. That's not my voice. That's a fake. Yeah, well, it's your word against mine. And thanks to my life insurance policy, I now happen to have a lot of money. Big deal. I have money too. True. But I also have friends. Crap. Seize her! <laughs> Well, another day of nothing abnormal going on. Blood for ball! Blood for ball! Blood for ball! What the hell is going on here? Revolution! Also human sacrifice, but mostly revolution! Untie Vivian this instant! Okay. Ow! Put the fire out first, Zack. Now what is the meaning of all this? Are you gonna tell him, Viv, or are we gonna have to force it out of you? I lied. Robin never cheated on that test. She never deserved to be kicked off of the exec board made to transfer schools and then die in a mysterious car accident that was definitely an accident. Vivian, how could you? I trusted you. I've smoked weed in front of you, man. I mean, no, I haven't. That's stupid. Smoking weed is my least favorite thing to do. Nevertheless... With these new revelations, I'm afraid I'm going to have to relieve you of your position and reinstate Robin as our program director. Yay! All right, then. Kick me off your precious executive board. But I still have my money. I can use that money to burn this crummy station to the ground. Then I'll start my own radio station with blackjack and hookers. Not so fast. <gasps> the Goddess Athena! That's right, bitches! Vivian Harmon, your evil deeds will not go unpunished. Because you used your wealth and status for wicked and selfish purposes, I'm going to turn you into a duck! No! Yay! And Robin, for your valiant and heroic efforts in removing this heartless tyrant from power, you shall be rewarded with the funeral of a Viking warrior! Yay! Quick now! Let 
us hurry to the lake. And so ends my tale. Finally! But lo, though this playlet may end, the story of WJMU goes on! And on, and on, and on, and on. Before I depart, I leave you with this one final thought. If you decide to become a stand-up comedian, do not tell jokes about radio. Why not? Because they always get very poor reception. Get it? Oh. Well, that's our show for tonight. A special thanks to the cast and crew and to the members of WJMU's executive board who so graciously agreed to appear in the cold open. And of course, thanks to all of you listening in tonight. We hope you enjoyed our show. I'll be back with Alex sometime in the foreseeable future. And I'll be suing Sam for emotional distress. Hey! Until then, break a leg, we love you, and good night. That was Once More for Fun. Hosted by Sam LaRoe and Kelson Bowman. Starring Will Barden, John D'Angelo, Taylor Eckert, Jamie Gamones, Marissa Garcia, Tate Heinley, Rebecca Jaffe, Colin McGonigal, Michalina McNaughton, Jocelyn Niedbala, Sarah Obert, Owen Peterson, Bryn Setner, Megan Welfer, Joshua Wick, Ruth Zilke, and Jake Zeman. With special guests Nicole Dodoli, Jordan Diver, Caleb Kelch, and Sam Meister. This program was written by Peyton Humphreys, Rebecca Jaffe, Valerie Kinley, Frank Macaluso, and Ruth Zilke, and directed and produced by Frank Macaluso. This is your announcer, Austin Shaw speaking.